up everybody? Tyson Daisy Joe for life. I'm um, just doing another follow-up video and this is gonna be a video of me making the flange for the container. Um, the flange is the start because it is what everything is mounted to. Alright, so I want to show you a couple more things that I got. Um, let me take this camera off real quick. If it'll let me. And then we'll get her done. Alright. Okay, so I got the two inch exhaust pipe clamps. I have four of those. I may need um, end up needing six of them because I'm I'm gonna put a T at the uh, inlet part and outlet part on the vaporizer um, or on the exhaust lines to make it so that exhaust can flow through when the exhaust is shut off to the container. Okay next this is my three inch ball valve. Yeah it's huge. Um, I was expecting it to be big but holy cow I wasn't expecting the handle to be quite that big. Um, just so you can compare it to my hand that's uh, the size of this little booger. <laughs> so, it's pretty big. Um, compare it to the actual container itself. That's how big it is compared to the container. Um, so yeah, it's going to take up a lot of room, but that's okay. Because this is all for testing purposes. It's not going to have to be there. Once I figure out exactly what air to, air to fuel ratio is needed, um, so, okay, this part right here, what I have, are these are some of the rods. This is going to be for the uh, preheater. I'm building a uh, heat exchanger to preheat the air, come the outside air going into the vaporizer chamber. This will help maintain a proper heat level in the container at all times. I'll also have a um, a valve connected to that to control the uh, exhaust going into that so that I can maintain basically the same temperature of air flowing through that as what's in the vaporizer. Okay, what I have here is, let's see if I can, this is some tubing. No, you can see it in a few points. Where I'm, there we go. This is some half inch tubing. Um, and then what I have here is, I don't know what size of rod this is, quarter inch. This is a piece of quarter inch rod. Okay, how it's going to work is on these ends right here, I'm going to have to grind them down or have a machine down um, so that it looks like the end of a plumb bob. So it comes to a point. Then once that's done, I... I'm going to insert it into this pipe. Okay. And then I'm going to just do a little couple of tack welds, but you can see that there is a space between the two. And I'm going to space them out evenly and just put some tack welds on to hold them in place. And what this will do is force the air to go against this pipe right here instead of going through the center of this pipe forces it against the outside inner portion of the pipe but against the outside wall which is going to be heated up from the exhaust so that's going to help maintain the proper temperature in my container um, I'm going to be cutting these down into shorter sections so probably about six inches or so um, I'm just going to use this right here, this piece of spare rectangular tubing that I had. Um, so, I'm going to cut this down. So it's about yay long. Um, I'm going to drill a bunch of holes in a piece of plate that will fit on the inside. 
of this square tubing right here. Obviously it needs to be smaller, but it's going to fit on the inside, slip on the inside. Um, and then I'm going to have a bunch of holes drilled through it that this piece of tubing will um, go into. And then I'm going to weld it around the tubing in this plate. And I'm going to have a bunch of those um, so that it heats up these pipes and lets the air flow through. So that's going to be my heating chamber to preheat the um, ambient air going into the vapor container. Now that you know that, Let's get started on the real stuff. Okay, I'm making my flange, so I wanted to give you some measurements, some dimensions of this tubing. Alright, this is the inner tube for the vapor container that's going to house the, all of the down pipes and the gasoline and the, um, the gasoline, the, the float valve, and all that kind of good stuff. All of your stainless steel and mesh screening of perforated steel. Uh, sorry, stainless and stainless steel wool. Um, so, the dimensions of this. I need to worry about the inside dimensions. Um, so, just because of how I'm going to cut the flange out. So, the inside dimensions of this tube on the longer end is going to be six and five eighths of an inch. Okay, from this inner point right here to this inner point right here. Then, from the shorter side, this edge, this inside edge to this inside edge, it measures four and five eighths of an inch. Okay, now that we know that, this plate right here, which is going to be the flange plate, it measures nine inches from this edge over here to this edge over here, which is the long side, and then measures seven inches from this edge right here to this edge over here, which is the short side. And since we have all those dimensions, now we need to find out what the center is. From like this, okay? From this edge to this edge, uh, um, to the, this edge inside here to this edge. So, you do the math, subtract it down, and what you have left over per side, the gap that you need is going to be one and three sixteenths of an inch between this the um, the side of the uh, plate to the inner part where the uh, tubing is going to be and same with on this side we're going to need one and three sixteenths of an inch from the edge of this plate to the inside and that's going to be our flange so now that you guys know that I'm going to cut it out all right, and then I'll come back to you and show you what it looks like once it's done. All right, everybody, I got the flange cut out. I just used a grinder. Um, if I had a uh, laser cutter, something like that, that would have been a whole lot better, but it works. It's just fine. I don't have to have perfect, and I don't have to have it perfect because it's just going to be welded around anyway and the weld will seal everything off. But, there it is. The flange. So, there we go. All right, what I'm gonna do with this is I'll set this on top just like that. Get it all nice and centered. Okay. I can see right there. Then, I'm gonna put a weld right here along this seam. Okay, and I'm just gonna weld it all the way around. I may, when I 
what I may end up doing is welding it on up here if I can. Um, because I don't want my weld to get in the way. Sorry, guys. Whoa. Of when I put this on. Okay, so after that's welded on there like this, under that flange, this piece right here is going to slide over. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is weld that piece onto the flange. As you see, like that. I'll have that gap in between. Before I weld that outer pipe on, though, um, what I'm going to do. Wrong size. Here we go. Is I'm going to weld this piece on. Okay. Once I weld that on, that's the cap. And then the contain inner of the con inside of the container. I'm going to place a weld right along the seam, all the way around. Bam! And then after that's welded on, guys. I'm going to have this go on. And I'll have a gap, and once that's welded on, obviously I'll center it and everything. Then I'm going to get this plate. Bam, just like that. And weld that one on. And then I'll have my container. And this right here will be the lid for the other side where the flange is at. Obviously I'll have holes drilled through it and other fittings welded onto that uh, for the downpipe and all that kind of stuff. But that's why I say the flange is the start of everything. Without the flange you can't hold the two pieces together. So. There it is again, my friends. All right, um, one thing that I didn't mention about this piece right here, the uh, preheater for the ambient air coming into the container, is um, oh, I remember. Sorry, brain fart for a second. I'm going to be welding some exhaust tubing onto either side, um, two inch exhaust tubing, so that exhaust will flow through there. Um, I'm going to basically connect the uh, outlet of the container, the vaporizer container, the exhaust outlet into this, into the inlet on here, then have that outlet go and tie back into my exhaust line that will go and push the exhaust out into the air. So that's the last thing that I was going to tell you about that. Well, probably not the last, but that's OK. All right, well, that's it for this video. It's Tyson with Fuel Systems Research and Development, HHL for Life, all that kind of good stuff. Peace out, have fun, be safe, and all that kind of stuff. If you guys need more details, go ahead and put a comment. Um, and let me know what questions you have, so take care. Later.